Now we're ready. Taro with First Ignite, make your way up. Hey everybody, I'm Chase Bonhag, and I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I recently moved back from Chicago, Illinois, back home to Traverse City, Michigan. For the, <laughs> woo, yeah. for the last few years, I've been working in venture capital in Illinois, both for Illinois Ventures and TechNexus, helping support 19 investment deals syndicated with 50 global investors, and I came across a lot of problems. A lot of problems that we're looking to solve with First Ignite, um, where we provide the linkage between ideas and growth. Um, um, so I'm not sure if you're aware, but 95% of all patents out in the world today will not be commercialized. Nine out of 10 startups are failing, including 75% of venture capital backed startups. We believe this is a business development problem. It's a problem of getting sales, depending on who you are within that market. So it's a complex ecosystem that we serve, but these are our customers. We serve inventors, we serve tech transfer offices, we serve corporations, we serve startups, and we serve venture capital firms, all of which are trying to connect with each other, but they're really struggling to do so successfully. And we're building technology using natural language processing, as well as algorithms, to help kind of simplify that and create the matches in between. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you think about eHarmony.com, humans have been using scientific algorithmic matchmaking for years. There's now married couples potentially in this office or in this uh, room, including children who've been born thanks to algorithmic matchmaking and successfully connecting <laughs> parties that are interested in each other. We're bringing that type of thinking, that type of thought process to the business world. And we're using natural language processing, um, to provide actionable outputs to people that should be interacting with each other. So a startup, if we've identified a customer for them, we can then identify, hey, this customer's gonna be at this trade show and you need to be there so you can be there to speak with them. Um, and then the other piece that we're doing is writing algorithms. We've got uh, 300 hypotheses already written, some of which would be like the idea of a Duke University technology or an invention matched with Apple Corporation has a higher probability of successfully being licensed because Tim Cook, Apple CEO, is a Duke alumni. Now we can extrapolate that across lots of different problems, but that's the thought process we're taking into this, is that if we create detailed profiles on individuals and write algorithms that can help match those profiles, we're gonna be able to get business done at a quicker rate. Um, but we talked about nine out of 10 startups failing. Well, we're not gonna be one of them because we understand that the big reason that companies fail is they have an inability to generate revenue from their target market. So to start, we're working with our target market, selling business services, consulting services, to learn about them, to understand their problem, and to work towards a technological solution based on that research. Some examples would be, we're working on a project with Mayo Clinic. They've got 550 technologies that could help patients worldwide available on their shelf today. We're focusing on a subset of 25 of them to build marketing and branding packages associated with them, so it's not just a patent that someone has to read, it's a video that has the researcher describing what this technology can do, and what, what it's capable of, and where the market applications are. And then we're matching, we're going out and starting our process of using that natural language processing to take the profiles we create on the researcher and the research to identify new business opportunities with them to say, here's startups who could license it, here's corporations that would be interested, um, and here's who you need to talk to in your tech transfer office to get that technology off the shelf. With Abbott Laboratories, we're co-developing a product we call the Pulse Report. Now the Pulse Report is a monthly um, pulse on what's going on in markets they care about. So we take, let's say, 20 startup, startups that they should be keeping an eye on, and we monitor things like FDA clinical trials. Has one of these startups started a new trial? Have they posted jobs? Have they raised capital? And we compile this, these outputs into a monthly report, but again, it's us using our databases for the first time um, and, and, whoops, and doing so with them. Oop, there's our pretty faces. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, so where do we sit? The big difference is that we serve all five of those customer types, but we provide actionable outputs. So what are they supposed to be doing based on information? It's not just information, it's a next step. So you learned a little bit about me. Cody Pulowski, one of our co-founders, he built a technology using natural language processing and sentiment analysis that correctly predicted both Brexit and the Trump um, election based on social media chatter, and we're using similar technology, as well as my father, Robert Bonhag, who's been building big data solutions in healthcare for a long time. 
but we wouldn't be able to do anything without these guys. These are who we text on a daily basis to say, what are we supposed to do here? What's our next move? This is who's introducing us to our customers and confirming that what we're building is worthwhile. Um, what we're asking for today is we're raising a pre-seed round of $125,000 with a $2 million valuation cap, uh, but we're also offering our first investors 5% common share in the company. And what that means is we're looking at more like an accelerator type um, structure on this first deal. And so if we had five investors at $25,000 each, they'd each in gain an additional 1% equity in the company. So yeah, that's First Ignite. We're building something really cool in Traverse City and we're really excited to be here. Oh, cool. Hey. So if we look through a patent, we word cloud, right? We, we see all the key phrases associated with that technology. Um, we extract that from the patent. And then we layer that over all our other databases to identify and this is our, the, the simplest way to describe it, but to identify where is cryogenic container, which would be something you maybe find in a healthcare patent. Where's cryogenic container? Who's hiring for it? Who's raising capital for it? Who would be interested in that technology? And so we layer it over our, our data lake. So yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And now we can do it in a few seconds. We can read millions of lines of information to identify similarities in a matter of seconds, and it's fairly simple technology. Um, the algorithms then are what take it to the next step to, to say why does it matter um, to, to the next level. Suppose someone has a million dollars. Oh my gosh. I, I don't even like, my goal, one of the reasons, I, one of the things I said is I never want to read a patent again, and I hope that our software can like help enable that for me because that, that's, again, it's a boring text document. Yeah. Absolutely. Sorry, I got light in my face, so. If you fit. Yeah, couple more, couple more minutes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, so all of my background today was an exciting day. Um, Western Michigan University, one of my alma maters, uh, put me on their 30 under 30 list. So that was cool and exciting. Um, and that's going to really help with our fundraising process and things of that nature, I think. Woo. Yeah, cool. Thanks, guys. I've been cutting my teeth in this industry for a while, so it's pretty exciting. So, all right, so the problem with technology commercialization in our minds when it comes to like a patent at a university is that they're speaking about the technology in the wrong sense. So they put a patent on a shelf and they expect some, a corporation or investor to come license it. We don't believe that's the solution. We have to create a, a commercialization brand around it. So yes, it's a nice patent, but what does that mean for somebody in a business role or you know, a consultant, someone who is supposed to take to the next step? So as for, far as marketing work that we're doing, we outsource like video creation and kind of like PDF material creation so that the, the commercialization brand and the commercialization story is being told about a technology so that when we send that technology to the interested parties, that they're receiving it in a format in a language that they, better, that they understand, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm hmm So, so the work we're doing with Abbott is technically within handheld diagnostics, and it provides kind of an overview of what's going on in point-of-care diagnostics, it's called. So we work with a very specific group within Abbott, but it's handheld uh, blood diagnostics in, in a handheld device. Um, we plan on selling that same report that Abbott's doing, removing any like forward-thinking statements or forward-looking areas they want to look that are outside of that, and then we would sell it to the same individuals that are being tracked in that. So you look at Roche, Roche Diagnostics or Siemens. So there, there's nothing that Abbott's providing to us that is proprietary or confidential.
Really, really cool question. So one of the biggest problems is corporate's ability to interact with startups. So we're actually, one of the ways we vision what we're building is we'd love to charge, and TechNexus, my old firm did this, is charge consulting level prices for like a software solution. And so we'd love to spend two hours with Abbott going over a report where we say like, here's five startups you should partner with. And we would love to get paid to help liaison that conversation as well. Um, as well as get paid by the startup to say, hey, your marketing and branding package isn't up to date to be, or up, up to snuff to be able to kind of put that in front of Abbott. So um, th there's so many different ways we plan on getting paid with that, but uh, I, I hope that answers your question. Sorry to run. Cool. Cool, really good question. So available data sources that we have would be like all patents ever, in, ever issued by USPTO. Um, we've got kind of all the all, all jobs that are out there. We've got all the grants that are publicly available. We've got a lot of public data sets. And then we also have private data sets that we create on each individual or each individual corporation to help kind of with the matching. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you very much.